Hey everybody, have you ever used TikTok in your business? I know I hadn't. I mean, why would I use TikTok? My 13 year old sits around and watch TikTok for hours. I got to constantly be poking him, trying to get him off the couch to get him off his phone and he's sucked into it. So why would I be using it for my business? Well, I can tell you what, my guest today is a TikTok master. This guy has been able to accumulate over 260,000 TikTok followers and is able to build an entire SEO marketing and digital agency around a TikTok platform. How is that even possible? So let's get right into it, guys. I want to bring in my special guest here today, the social TY pro, Austin Armstrong. What's happening, my friend? How's it going? We are going to change some mindsets today about TikTok, brother. Well, I hope so, because like I said, you know, trying to get my kids off this platform is like, you know, <laughs> trying to pry them away from uh, TikTok. <laughs> it's addicting. It's mm -hmm. addicting. For sure. <laughs> so, hey, Austin, thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I've, I'm just so impressed by what you've been able to do as far as TikTok and, and being able to build a whole business around it. But so before we dig right into that, I want you to, to just tell us a little bit about who you are and then we're going to get into how you got into this. Like, like who is the who is the real Austin Armstrong? You bet. Um, I am just somebody obsessed with digital marketing <laughs> to sum it all up. Um, I own uh, Socialty Pro. It's a full, we're a full service digital marketing agency, but honestly, I am just so passionate about social media and digital marketing. I've been doing this, Jeff, since I was 14, uh, which is 17 years ago, I started back on MySpace uh, doing social media marketing. And I literally just uh, never stopped. Um, so that's, yeah, I mean, I, I am so passionate about this stuff. I love this stuff. And um, that's that's more or less it. So you, you said we'll you got started. So, so you said you got started with MySpace? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 14 years old, I, start, I stumbled into social media marketing uh, as a 14-year-old. And I just more or less never stopped. <laughs> I think that's awesome because my space was, you know, I was already well past that. Like when my space, what year was that? Just so I can give a good reference because yeah, I had no interest in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, started in, uh, 2004. Um, and I think it had its heyday from tw uh, 2004 to about 2008 and maybe even 2008 was like, it was really tapering down. Yeah. Already, so. Okay. So I was 34 years old. So for me, that was like, what, what is this whole thing? I mean, like I was, I was like almost past that in a way, which almost sure. feels the same as TikTok, right? Like, oh, what is this TikTok thing? I mean, TikTok came out in 2016 and you'll talk more about that. Yeah. But like, you know, I saw that as something like, what, why would, why would I even bother? So like, what was it that got you like, why TikTok? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I go back to a, a Gary V quote that wherever there is a collection of people, there's an opportunity to market to them. Um, so I, how I got started on TikTok, and by the way, two days ago was my two year anniversary on the platform. So I've been actively creating content for two years now. Um, how I got started on it, I was just observing, uh, hearing people like Gary V shove it down all of our throats. You got to get on this platform. You got to get on this new platform. It's the newest, biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. It's the fastest growing social media platform ever. Uh, so I dabbled on it for, for a little bit, just kind of learned the app, observed, didn't really create much content. If I did, it was, you know, wasn't for business specific at first. I was jumping on trends and, you know, maybe I did a video on you know a social media topic or a, or a tactic or strategy or something like that uh, but I, I never was consistent with it and then i had a, a little bit of an, an epiphany um why am i you know i was floundering right i had created videos for six months straight with no real plan just meaningless uh all over the place content so i said you know what i'm gonna give this a, a month um and see how it goes. I'm, but I'm going to go all in on using it as a tool for my business and see what I can get out of it. I'm going to post one to two videos every single day. 
talking about the actual services that my agency offers and just see what happens. Just double down, go all in, really narrow. And almost immediately, a couple of days later, uh, it, it took off. Uh, so I had um, uh, one video in particular uh, do exceptionally well uh, in the SEO space. Um, and I doubled down. You know, I got a ton of comments on that video and I answered every single one of them with a video response, something really cool uh within TikTok is the ability to communicate with your audience and and answer their questions with video it's a really personal approach and i'll um i'll, I'll cut this short but i one other important thing is is that um about a year and a half ago i was let go from my full-time job so my agency was part-time uh, i was a side uh, totally a side hustle I was sort of blindsided, a little bit of politics, whatever, not going to get into it. Middle of the pandemic, um, got let go from my job. I had saved up um, and had income from the company, from my company, to have about two months uh, to go all in uh, and bet on myself as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. And I did. And I went and I even more so went all in on TikTok. Like, this is my job now, is to make this thing work, make this platform work. I cannot fail because I can not fail my family. And it just clicked, man. Uh, it, it just worked. Uh, in, in those two months, uh, business skyrocketed. My account skyrocketed. People started to reach out. Leads were being generated. And it literally changed my life uh, overnight. Uh, so being fired was the best thing that ever happened to me. And the decision to go all in on TikTok was the, maybe the second best thing. That <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great, right? Like no pressure, no diamonds. It's amazing yeah. what we can accomplish when we're under pressure. Like, okay, now I'm let go from my job. I'm doing this kind of as a side hustle. But it sounds like you were you were catching some momentum on TikTok. So, but yeah. I want to back up before you created that momentum and you said to yourself, okay, I'm going to go in all in with TikTok. There had to have been something prior to that, that made you say, well, somebody else has done it. So I know that I can do it because you weren't the first one to just jump in on TikTok and become successful because of it. So what did you see? And what did you tell yourself on like strategically how you were going to get to the point where you could post two things a day. And then we'll get into it here in a little bit on what those things are and how you do it. Yeah. So there's a, there's a very, even still now there's a very small uh, marketing community on TikTok. But at that time there were a, a couple that were doing uh, very well. I, I always uh, give um, credit where it's due. Uh, there's a, a great TikTok coach. Uh, her name is uh, Rachel Peterson. She really changed my mindset. Uh, on on TikTok in particular, so I attended one of her live webinars, uh, and and she was talking about business owners, how business owners can uh, create service based videos in short form on TikTok, looking at different hashtags and whatnot, and that really resonated with me. Um, and it, it's with a D, by the way. Uh, I was going to ask you. I wanted to put that up there, but I wasn't sure. Threw that up there. I was so like, dang it. Her, her just and, my luck, right? Yeah, yeah. her and Gary Vee are totally the reasons why I, I went in on, on TikTok. But I saw what she was doing and it was really resonating with me because uh, we've been doing YouTube and I've been doing video marketing for about eight years, working a lot with professionals. So I, you know, that's really how I, I jumped into it and, and saw that there was an opportunity there because like if I, you know, if I started talking about SEO on YouTube, it's a pretty saturated platform. Yeah, every, you know, and not to say that there's room to grow in that in any space, because we're all unique human beings with unique perspectives and communication styles. But it, it it's not a, a blue ocean, right? There was so many, comp, there's so much competition on YouTube and other platforms talking about SEO. There was nobody on TikTok talking about SEO, nobody at all, no accounts dedicated to this one thing. So I saw that as an opportunity. Um, and I decided to jump in all on that. Cool. So when you saw that opportunity, which is great because like I talk about this all the time in, in modeling success, 
And mm. success leaves clues along the way. It's kind of like the breadcrumbs along the trail. I always think about the Brady Bunch. This always dates me. There was a, a, a episode in Hawaii where they laid the breadcrumbs and then they, cause they were, and then they got lost and then they had to find them, but the bird ate the breadcrumbs. I don't know if you guys remember that, but anyways, and, uh, where success leaves clues. And so when we model certain things, so you were modeling a brand new, what well, kind of brand new, a, a new venture down the TikTok road, probably modeling what they were doing. So what were some things that you learned from, from them and what they were doing that a real estate agent could implement into their business to do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have a saying that I always like to to say to all business owners that that want to uh, market themselves, and that's to quantify your expertise. You know, really break down everything that you have expertise in, all of the services that you offer, all of the reasons uh, why somebody would come to you for help in the first place write all of that down R literally yeah write it down um and now you have a content strategy um that you can begin to talk about and then structuring it you know one of the things that i i found on TikTok is the attention span is really short so you really have to focus on having uh, bullet pointed information so for me like just riffing did not really work i had to write down a lot of topics and i had to structure it a little bit better at first and that structure is really opening with a hook you know hooking the attention in trying to grab their attention immediately immediately providing value you know you don't need to talk about yourself talk about what's going to be beneficial to your audience to the viewer and then you can end it with a with a call to action um you know there's tons of different call to actions if you want to capture leads you can say you know contact me here or click the link in my bio um, if you want to increase engagement, you can say, let me know your thoughts on X, Y, Z in the comments, uh, follow for more tips on this specific thing. And I noticed the more successful people I was, you know, had that format in place over and over again, hook value call to action. Um, so I started to emulate that. And this is a format that we apply to all of the uh, TikTok clients and businesses that we work with at our agency now, uh, and it works really well. So quantifying the expertise, breaking it down, um, and and applying it in that really concise structure. I had myself muted. Uh, mm -hmm. That that right there is a system, right? Yeah. You you've created a framework around how you're going to post your videos on TikTok, right? Yeah. So even though you've posted, how many videos have you put on, on TikTok? Yeah, I'm past 1400 now. So like 1450. Okay. So about 1450. Okay. In, in how many, in how long? Two years. Two years. Okay. And for the most part, those are all following the same structure and the same framework that you just talked about, right? Yes. Unless I'm answering a specific question to somebody in a video Which, response which was generated as a result of one of the other TikTok videos that you had previously done. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So for, for those of you who are, for are watching live, especially what questions do you have right now for Austin, right? Do you have any specific questions on what this framework looks like and how you could adapt it to your real estate business? Are you in a different business? And you're like, wow, you know, I didn't realize that somebody could be successful using, using TikTok. Um, go ahead and ask your questions in the chat box there. Let us know what you guys have. And I want to get back to, um, the attention span mm. because that is something that, you know, I've seen studies that, um, we have the attention span span of less than, than a goldfish, which is like eight seconds. Crazy. So, yeah. I know on certain platforms, you only, especially TikTok, you only have a certain amount of time to capture somebody's attention. I want you to get into the human aspect of that. And I also want you to touch on the algorithm piece of that. Sure. Yeah. So the on the human piece, you really have, because TikTok is so, it's so easy to scroll. Like, you know, you could almost compare it to like uh, like a dating app, like Tinder, right? Like if you don't like what you see immediately, you just swipe right, like, right? So same thing on TikTok, you swipe up and down. So you have to immediately address 
uh, a pain point, an emotional trigger, um, the value of the video, um, something that will genuinely help the viewer as soon as possible. So some recent ones, uh, like I will open my video up by saying, this will get you more website traffic, right? That took me a second, one and a half seconds to say. If they're interested in that, they're going to keep watching. If they're not, they're going to scroll on. So I've already pre-qualified uh, the person by addressing the subject matter that I'm about to talk about. From an algorithmic perspective, watch time and view duration, and uh, even more specifically on um, TikTok completion rate and, and uh, rewatch rate is really important. So that's why the structure is so important is it helps increase that watch time, overall view duration and rewatch potential. And I'll give a hack for this in a second, uh, but making sure that there's no fluff in there. You know, YouTube is different. If I were to do a, a YouTube video in that format, I might do something like in this video, I'm going to be talking about X, Y, and Z. That's already too long. That's already too long to, to, you know, hook that audience in. And then on YouTube, sometimes we roll the intro banner, right? For, you know, a couple seconds. Or you might even introduce yourself and the value proposition of that channel. You know, hi, I'm Austin, your TikTok coach that's going to help you, you know, grow your business on TikTok. You're already 20 seconds in. That should be the length of your entire video on TikTok. So you really have to figure out how you can bullet point the information, right? So, you know, what works for me is immediately hooking, um, hooking the audience by telling them and a, a quick little power hack is, um, structure your video so that it can loop. So your first sentence should be something like, as an example, how to get more website traffic, right? And then immediately start showing tips, you know, pay attention to your analytics, make sure that you have a video in your in your uh, embedded into your blog article, um, you know, make sure that your content is, is X, Y, Z or header tags are this way and then end it by saying something like, and that's how, how to get, or, uh, and that's how to get more website traffic. You see what I did there? So the last sentence ties into the opening of the video. And if you do this really cleverly, your audience and the viewers don't necessarily know that the video has started over again in loops until it's already too late. So you're increasing that watch time dramatically. That is a nugget right there. There's the structure. There's there's the framework. Now, I want to I dig a little bit more into that, but we have a great question here. Um, and this one is from hey, Jen DeVore. It's from <laughs> Jen DeVore in the house. What's up, Jen? Um, so she says, with repurposing TikTok videos as YouTube shorts, am I putting my channel at risk of copywriting strikes if I upload a TikTok that has trending music or sounds on it into my YouTube channel? I see a lot of creators doing it, but I'm wondering if anybody has had issues. That's a great question, Jen. Austin, what do you think? Great. Yeah, great question. So I repurpose everything across every platform. Um, uh, long story short is it will, it, it can, if there's copyrighted music on there, it will uh, send a, uh, it'll, it'll say copyright violation on the back end of YouTube. However, um, this, is, this is coming from the mouth of the beast. Uh, a year and a half ago when YouTube shorts just dropped, they had addressed this specific question. So it can affect monetization. However, shorts cannot be currently monetized. There is a, they're working on a beta program, et cetera. Um, it will, it should not, and, and should, yeah, it should not impact your channel overall. Uh, however, if you want to work around this, what you should do is create the content outside of TikTok itself. Uh, there's, you can just use your camera and then edit it right on your phone. I use an app called InShot to do specific videos like this um, and don't have any music on there. So then what you can do is you can upload that video natively to TikTok and use the music that's specifically on TikTok. You can re-upload it onto YouTube Shorts specifically and use the YouTube, uh, the YouTube background music. Same thing on Instagram Reels as well. So it's not a big concern, but I would be cautious about it because it could change at any time. What about like 
if you did, um, since we're talking TikTok, let's say you did a TikTok and you used the music from TikTok, but it was a, it was just a regular song. Let's just say it was a Bob Marley song. Yeah. If you then exported that video and then put it on the YouTube shorts, reels, or any of the other platforms, is that a copyright? Is that an issue? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was talking about. So yes, okay. you, can, it, you will get those copyright claims uh, on the back end. Okay. Even though it's, even though you could get the same song on that other channel, you would just need to pull it from that channel. Exactly. So yeah. the fix for that is just record it on your phone first and then upload it to the individual, individual platforms on their own. Then go ahead and go ahead and add in the music, the overlays and so forth. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, cool. So for, for people, Austin, for people who are like, all right, where do I even get started? Like we've, we've talked about structure. We've talked about mm -hmm. like exporting and importing, maybe some stuff that's a little bit further along. Let's like, let's peel mm -hmm. it back a little bit more and start really from scratch. People brand new, brand new accounts. Like what are like a few things that they should do, like must do's right away whether it's before they start posting them or like right when they start posting videos. And then we're going to get into actually posting the videos. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want me to gear this towards real estate agents specifically or, or all businesses in general? Let's um, I don't know. What do you guys think in the chat box? What do you <laughs> guys go, think? What do you, we go. what do you guys want for those of you who are watching live for those of you who are watching the recording? Awesome. Thank you. You're going to get your goods. I promise you that. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a sec. See if there's any more questions on that. Let's um, let's make it specific for real estate. Let's make it specific for real estate. So you're a you're a real estate agent. You're watching this, and you're like, wow, you know what? Like I've been hearing stuff about TikTok, and this was the the video they watched. They're like, all right, now I'm gonna do it. I'm listening to a pro. What should they do? What should it look like? Okay, I've prepared for this. Uh, your goal as a real estate agent is to make your page the go-to resource in your area so that they can trust you no matter where they're at in their buyer's journey, no matter where they're uh, ready to uh, make a purchase or they're considering moving to the area or they're selling their house, you know, whatever it is, their objective, your goal here, if you want to be successful is to put out all of the content that would be helpful uh, for somebody just moving to the area so that they can trust you. And even if they're not ready in that moment, when they are ready, you're the first person that they think about. So really outlining a content, uh, content buckets before you even get started will really help, um, you craft a content strategy so that you're not thinking like, oh my gosh, what do I need to record today? I'm out of ideas. Structure, structure this out ahead of time. Okay. So I actually wrote some notes down. I'm going to read off of this. So, um, and I've studied a lot of real estate agents on TikTok as well. Uh, there are a good amount on there. This platform is an opportunity for you all to be industry leaders in your specific area. The top dogs, the, the, the red fins, the Zillows, the whatever, um, cannot compete with you if you go this granular. So, 30 second house uh, house tours hyping up the property uh no brainers right take people room by room share out uh you could do a recurring series on uh and this could be your opening hook here's what three hundred thousand dollars can buy you in dallas texas or here's what five hundred thousand dollars can buy you in austin texas etc enter your city there for instance um you want to provide first time home buyer tips so that they really trust you so that uh, you can help them save money right um things that you don't know what you don't know right should they waive inspections uh should they bid under asking um can you share with them how they can save money on closing costs or any other information like that highlight really cool things to do in the area the best food in town, the best restaurants, the best parks for dogs, for kids, the best bars and restaurants, the best activities. Talk about property values increasing so that they can see their, their home buying as an investment, right? Bring past clients on that you've helped buy and sell uh, homes to get testimonials from you. 
If you outline all of these things, you have years worth of content. Never mind answering specific questions that you're going to get in the comments. I would outline that all first. Do some research on other real estate agents on the platform and in general, seeing how they're formatting, uh, what they're using, what background music they're doing, what their bio looks like, what calls to action that they're using, how they're capturing leads, the music, the, the, the hashtags specifically go live often so that you can answer questions in real time. That was a mouthful, but that was a 30 second overview there. How's that? How's that? Wow. I mean, we could, we could unpack that for days, <laughs> but those are, those are everything you just mentioned, Austin. I know just about every real estate agent who's watching this video right now has knows this, but they've, they haven't been doing it in a way that's conducive to massive, massive growth through massive reach through a platform like TikTok. Yeah. It's been do that, provide that value, go knock doors, do mailers, send emails, and then social media came around, but this is a way to get it out immediately. So I'm going to yeah. put you on the spot here. 30 second video, take one of those topics that you just mentioned, pretend you're a real estate agent and do your hook your story and then your call to action and then wrap it back around to that. Okay. Give me, give me a second here. You got it. Should we leave inspection? Okay. Let me see here. Should you leave inspection? Yes. Uh, and then you're going to show us some of your TikToks. Okay, sure. Okay, so this is kind of on the spot. Let's see. It's totally on the spot. It's actually completely on the spot because we're live. All right. Okay, this is going to be rough. You could play around with this, but I'm going to play off of the uh, should you waive an inspection. So let's see. Should you waive an inspection when you're buying a new home? Well, if you're uh, if you're in a hurry and you need to uh, get a new house immediately, maybe you should. If you're in a really hot buyer's market where there's tons of bidding wars going on, then maybe you should waive it as well. Uh, third tip: enter here, and that's how and that's how to know if you should waive inspections on a new uh, when buying a new home. That was oh. really wrong, but hopefully that yep. gives the idea. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It just that what I wanted to show was that you don't even need to know enough about the business to put a TikTok together, a quick one, 30 seconds or less, or even 15 seconds. You got three seconds to get the audience's attention. And that was your hook. Say your hook again. How to know if you should waive an inspection when buying a home. Boom. Okay. If I'm thinking about it, then I'm going to check that out. Now, for the people who are watching, they're like, yeah, but why do people care about that? Why would people care about that, Austin? Uh, well, I'm I'm a first-time home buyer recently. Right. We're in a really hot market. Uh, <laughs> that's where I base this whole question off of, actually. Uh, so our real estate uh, agent told us that we should waive um, the inspection. And we actually did a walk and talk because every house that we, that we looked at, there's eight to 10 offers on it. Uh, so we found one that we liked, uh, and we, you know, we put an escalation clause in it. That could be another topic. Should you put an escalation clause in your offer? Right. Um, and, uh, and, and he said, you know, let's, let's waive the inspection. Let's put in an escalation clause and rather, you know, rather than doing a full inspection, we'll just do a walk and talk and see if the, if the seller's open to that. And we did all of these things. We, we listened to his advice. We had a great real estate agent and we got the offer on our very first, uh, we got the house on our very first offer that we put in. A lot of people, I'm in the DMV area, I'm in Northern Virginia. People are bidding on five, six, seven uh, house or putting in five, six, seven offers before they get a house. We listened to our real estate agent's advice. We waived, um, we waived that. And that was one of the single reasons we were, there was another offer on the house as well, but the seller went with us. And we think that that's one of the major reasons why.
Yeah. Yep. Absolutely positioned yourself in a way. And that's information that a real estate agent can then take like you just did and share it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Now for yeah. you, as somebody who is a TikTok user, who is on TikTok looking, when you were ready to start the process of looking for a home, that that stuff started to, to show up in your feed, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. How did that happen? Well, the, the TikTok has the probably the best algorithm ever. Um, and it, you know, people are wary of it. Uh, like when you first open the app, uh, it's going to show you randomness because it doesn't know what you like. But the more that you're starting to engage with stuff, like, you know, I might get a random uh, real estate video and maybe I watch that video for a little bit longer than the other random uh, stuff in my in my feed. Or maybe I heart that video or maybe I leave a comment, right? Engage with that video in some way. Or maybe I did a search for real estate in my particular area. Um, you know, if you're showing interest in a particular uh, topic or, or subject, it's going to show you more of that content. And the more that you engage with that content, the more content that it's going to show. Uh, so that's really the power, you know, circling it back to this content strategy uh, a little bit. You have to be consistent uh, with uploading this content as well so that you are training TikTok of who your content is for and that you can continue to stay top of mind. But it's a fantastic algorithm. Uh, you just have to put in just a little bit of work uh, to tell it what you're interested in and it you'll get addicted in no time. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, so for real estate agents that are like, oh my gosh, I'm already so busy. I'm already doing this. I'm trying to build yeah. email campaigns. I'm working on my listing consultations. Like I have so much. Why should I use TikTok? Like it's just one more thing that I have to do. One more thing that I have to learn. Why should a real estate agent use TikTok? I'll give you a couple reasons. First, it's the fastest growing social media platform ever, and it's untapped by the majority of business owners. So yeah, there's a couple real estate agents on here. I guarantee if there's another one in your area, there's probably only one. <laughs> you got no competition, right? <laughs> there's over a hundred million active users in the United States alone on TikTok right now that spend an average of 60 minutes a day on the platform. Everybody's target audience is on TikTok and it's not being used correctly for businesses. Another reason why you should be on there is because when you get this flow down, this structure, you can crank out content like nothing. It takes you no additional time. Yes, you can add production value if you want, but to just get started, you don't. My content, and we can show some of my videos on here, takes me a minute from A to Z. And I'll just be, you know, working, working. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have an idea for a TikTok video. I just pump it out real quick takes me a minute to do. I know exactly what I need to do because I've built that muscle over uploading, you know, 1400 videos. Um, but I got it down. I know the format that works. I know how to increase my, my uh, viewer duration as much as possible. I can crank that content out. I'm selfie, screen record, selfie, like yep. value call to action, right? Um, you know, just get started with it. Be consistent, upload content every day. And a final reason why you should be doing this right now is we've alluded to it before. There is, uh, you can repurpose your content across every other platform, including your website. Okay. There, there has never been a better time to grow on social media than right now, because TikTok forced the hand of every other social media platform out there. YouTube shorts, Instagram reels. We have Pinterest, um, uh, I repost them on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Every platform supports vertical video now. So you can record one video and easily repurpose it across every major platform. Uh, five years ago, repurposing was, was a no-no. You wanna create unique content uh, for each individual platform. This right now works across every platform. Yeah, that is so huge and such a big thing because one 30 second video that may take you just a few minutes to put together with the formula. And I think we have something to share here in a little bit to help people do that. I think it's like a checklist to help people yeah. we'll do that is to, to follow that system. And like, just remember every expert started as a beginner. So I'm Absolutely. sure like your first few TikToks probably Garbage. sucked. Garbage. And then after that, they got better. And what happened was, like you said, you started building that muscle 
where now all of a sudden you could start using it more. It became more effective, more efficient. And now I'm sure you're batching content, which we won't get into yet because I want you to show some of your, your current TikToks. But what it does, guys, too, is it, 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 it adds authority. You know, if somebody's on the platform with 100 million users, there's people on it. It's not just for kids, you guys. There's a lot of adults on here that are cruising around. And they come across, like, if I was looking for SEO and I came across Austin's platform and I see he has 260,000 followers, I'm already, he already has authority there. So just remember that that's creating authority and you'll get business from it. Obviously, Austin's got an award back there, what he made. Can I share that? Can I share? Sure. He made over $250,000 using video. This is the Dark Horse Society Award. Thank you, Video Marketing World. Shout yeah. out to Video Marketing World. What's up? I mean, you guys, that's a quarter of a million dollars from video. And he's doing TikToks. Yeah. And he just showed you how you can do it in your real estate business. He just gave you an example. And in a few minutes, we're going to give you some more really good stuff. We're going to give away some free stuff. I actually have some shirts to give away. Oh, Austin, Austin, my brother, what uh, what size do you wear? Uh, give me give me a medium. I will rock medium. that in some videos. All right. I got you a medium. You want gray or you want black? Black. Black. All right. Black medium for Austin. I'll get your mailing address <laughs> Thanks, later. Brother. You got it. Um, all right, let's, um, Austin, I want you to share your screen. I want, I want everybody to see what your TikTok's yeah. like. Let's go through that, like that system, that process that you're, that you're using in your TikToks. So you can go ahead and share your screen. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. Here, let me refresh this here. Can you see my screen? Okay. Can you see my screen? I can't tell if you can see my screen or not. I can't hear you. Oops. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I had my, anyways. Yeah, we can totally oh. see it. Looks great. Oh, uh, okay, cool. So I'll just pull up some, a recent video. Um, here, we'll do this one. YouTube hack to increase your ad revenue. Go to your YouTube channel, click on estimated revenue, then click on see more. Click on this little plus icon, then select RPM. Post more videos of the ones that have the highest RPM. And that's a YouTube hack to increase your ad revenue. Whoops. That was exactly that okay, was ex <laughs> that was exactly what you just said. That hook at the beginning told the viewer yeah. exactly what it was. You grabbed the attention in the first three seconds. Then you showed some very specific things that people could do. So there's the value. And then you wrapped it back around to say, and this is what you use to get this. Yes. And it, it's, that's a, that was a 15 second video. So you have to do your best to hook them, provide them with something that they can take away and hold their attention. Yes. <laughs> yep. You so want to watch you... another example? I, I got tons. Of yeah. Them. Let's see a few more examples. I got 1400 examples. <laughs> well, let's do this. Cause I know I'm curious. I want to see your most watched TikTok. I want to see how many views it has. Oh. On it. This will probably blow your guys' mind. Oh my gosh. All right. That's going to be hard to pull up. Um, okay. Well, while, while you're, while you're doing that, do you guys have any, what questions do you guys have? Also, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and post your questions, your comments down below. Um, there's also some resources down there. We'll have Austin's checklist. I have a free ebook for you guys to help you launch your real estate business you're thinking about getting your license, you're not licensed yet, and you're just learning about TikTok and real estate, can help you get your license. Just go ahead and comment down in the section there. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what helps, what's helping you, what's not, what you want to learn more about, what what live videos do you want? Who do you want me to bring on the show? Uh, and we'll, we'll absolutely make that happen because we're doing this for you guys. So were you able to find that, Austin? Yeah, I, I have a good example. My uh, my my top viewed video is not really relevant to uh, to business or anything. So I'm going to show you a very successful video that is. And then you're going to show us that one. I can. I, I can if you <laughs> like. Okay. So the one I'm, I'm going to show you has uh, 1.5 million views um, and like 50,000 shares or something like that. So one sec. Share my screen again. Okay. You can see this okay? I'm gonna uh, yes. There we go. Yep. Okay. 
three incredibly useful websites that are about to change your life. Infogram.com. Easy to use and editable templates for slides, dashboards, infographics, Instagram posts, and so much more. And it's free. Alternative2.net. Find alternative services and websites to some of your favorite things. Want to find a free Photoshop alternative? Just click on it and apply the free filter. ULPeople.edu. University of the People is the first nonprofit, American credited, and tuition free online university. Share this video with yourself because this is going to come in handy. Three incredibly useful and websites. So let's that are see about if I can change pull your life. Here, one sec. Infogram.com. Easy one sec. to use and editable me... templates for slot. Here, I'll show you the analytics on this. Uh, take you behind the scenes a little bit. Uh, so yeah, 1.5 million views here, 140,000 people liked it, uh, 43,000, almost 44,000 shares, 20% of people watched the entire video. That's really important metric. Uh, and that gives you, you know, us based country base, et cetera. That's awesome. You had mentioned in that video, I noticed you said save video and come back. Can you talk about like, like, yeah comments, saves, likes, like, and how all of that stuff, Frank, like you didn't just, you didn't just do that randomly. Yeah. So, um, have a paralysis analysis in the back of your head. If you give people too many options or too many things to do, they're most likely going to not do anything, let alone what you want them to do most. So by having one clear call to action, they're much more likely to take that one specific action. So in that video, for, for example, I'm, I'm telling them to, uh, that I want them to share this video with yourself so that you can view them later. There's a couple psychological things that I'm doing there, right? First, I'm telling them one, th one clear thing that I want them to do. And, and I know that that share button has extra weight in the algorithm as an engagement metric in TikTok. So that's one thing. So like, you know, a heart is one point, a comment is two points and a share is three points and, uh, and rewatching is five points. We'll just call it, call it that more or less. Right. Um, so I know if I tell them to do one clear call to action, uh, and it's, you know, that three point system over time, I'm going to rack up more points, right. I'm going to get more points on the board. Um, it also increases uh, that um, that watch time uh, on on the the video. So I just turned one video or one view into repeated viewers because I told them to share this video with themselves so that they can take action on it or watch it later, for instance. That's awesome. Yep. So it's it's you're doing that purposely to get people to get more points to kick the algorithm in and also people rewatch the video and save yep. that. So that's a, that's another little hack um, for you guys. So for those of you who are, were doubting TikTok when you first started watching this video, hopefully now you're starting to see that there's actually a process for this. And there are some really good legitimate reasons that Austin brought up on why you should be using this platform. Right? So think about like, some of the things that he mentioned earlier, as far as, you know, uh, three things to why not to get an inspection or think of all the things that you do in your business on a daily basis and how you could sum that up in 15 to 30 seconds with really guys, it's how to's or five things you need to know about resources, value propositions that you should already be offering to your clients that you can now be offering to the world. So let's, let's get into that a little bit. Austin is how did you build the business part? You have all of these followers, you have all of these likes, the channels kicking butt. It's great for the ego, but how does that equate to actually making money? Yeah. Um, so I've monetized my TikTok channel in, in seven or eight different ways. I'm not telling everybody to do that. Um, start with one clear uh, goal of how you want to make money or capture leads. Uh, how I grew my business and, and gained clients is through having a Calendly link in my bio. So your bio and the link in your bio are absolute powerhouses if you uh, take advantage of them. So that bio, for instance, uh, you want to have some keywords in there as well. So like you could have like 
you know, Houston, Texas real estate agent, right? So that when anybody searches for you, they know what you're about, you know? And then below that, you could have a value proposition, right? Helping new people in Houston move in comfortably. I don't know, off the cuff. And then the third line, uh, because you get limited characters in your bio, you could say uh, a call to action in there. So, um, you know, uh, get a quote today or... Um, Get my free uh, buyer's guide today. Get, get my, my free, free marketing buyer. guide today. Absolutely. Whatever. Yeah. Like mine, for instance, says links to grow your business. Right. Uh, and I take them to my beacons link, which has a bunch of different links. It's a link expander. But you could just start with having, um, you know, schedule a 15, uh, a, fi a free 15 minute call with me here. Right. And then they it takes them to a calendar link or whatever your calendar link is. And you can pre-qualify them on Calendly by asking them specific questions. Uh, and that's what I do. That's one of the top things in my beacons. So I have that links to grow your business here. It opens up my, my link expander, my beacons. Um, and then I think the very first one is a lead magnet, get my free TikTok for business checklist. Uh, and then below that, I think is schedule a 15 minute call with me. Um, that takes them to my Calendly. And I, I'll be honest with you, I get about... 15 to 20 leads a week uh, through TikTok doing that specifically. Um, I just launched that, like I, I'll take you behind the veil here, right? I just launched that TikTok for business checklist um, uh, this week. So we're, we're it's Thursday. I have 85 email addresses so far that have been input into my, uh, my email drip campaign, right? So it's been four days or three days, 85 emails. These are 85 uh, potential, you know, potential customers, but potential people that I can help grow their businesses on, on TikTok. From there, like those are the two primary ones, but right. Put, put together a free offer so that you can capture their email, make it really easy for them to contact you. If you want more phone, uh, phone calls, for instance, if that's your preferred method in beacons, you can just have a, a clickable phone number button so that, uh, anybody that clicks on that link, it opens their phone has the number in there, all they need to do is press dial, right? Make it as easy as possible for them to contact you, whatever that contact method is that you want, right? You want to capture, you know, you want to do form fills, you send them to a, a form fill and have them do it that way. But the easier and less steps uh, that, that you can give them, all the better. Uh, from there, you can do all sorts of different things. Like I do affiliate marketing. Uh, I, I have been very successful doing affiliate marketing in TikTok. I promote a service. I promote a website. I say, if you want to try it out, click the link in my bio. Percentage of people that click on that link uh, will sign up. Anybody that signs up, I get a commission. Um, I personally love recurring commission affiliate marketing so that, you know, they, they pay a monthly fee for that service. I get a monthly recurring fee as long as they uh, pay and, uh, and set up. Uh, another way that you can uh, monetize your channel is by doing paid promotions or brand deals commonly called in uh, in the YouTube space, right? Once you build up a, a large enough following talking about a specific thing, um, you can open that up to brand deals, right? So like we talked about, like talking about in the real estate space, talking about the best restaurants or bars or parks uh, or libraries or whatever in your area. Well, if you're becoming a huge resource for your town or the city that you're in, and you have a lot of eyeballs that are interested in things and places in that particular area, well, guess what? You can go to businesses and businesses will start coming to you to promote their services. So on the back end, you can say XYZ mom, pop, mom and pop shop is the best Italian restaurant in Houston, Texas. Your audience doesn't need to know. I mean, you should tell them, you should like disclaim, like put ad in there or whatnot, um, that it's a sponsored ad, but you can, you can use that to your advantage. You can talk about services or products or whatever areas in your town and get paid from that from the business so those are so a couple I, different ways yeah i mean you, you just keep rattling off all of these different ways that you've been able to monetize from from TikTok. but it started as i'm going to use TikTok to build my seo and digital marketing agency yes. right absolutely look at all of these additional ancillary opportunities that came about as a result of posting two TikToks a day. 
One thing you mentioned that was really important here, and it's really um, a catalyst to all of this, is you have to offer something of value to the audience. It doesn't have to be every single time. I mean, I have one where we're throwing, I'm looking at it right now, we're throwing a football into a, a trash can a bunch of times because I was doing it with my kid. But that's, and we can get into this if we have some time, like that's a relatable subject where people can relate yeah. to me and my family. But I also have, you know, free launch guides for real estate agents, you know, free scholarship, these things to help people get what they want. They will gladly trade an email address to be able to get that. So mm -hmm. for real estate agents, think about that, you know, a, a free, take your buyer's guide, your buyer consultation or your marketing guide and scale it down to like a two page PDF. Um, I'm going to share again here in the um, chat box. And by the way, if you're watching the replay of this or you need to go back and watch the replay, all of the links that I've shared in the stream today, I will post down in the comment box or in the description box. You can always click on those. But for those that want to take a look at um, Austin's free resources, all of the things that he offers, these things of value to his audience, I'm still just like reeling about all these extra opportunities that, because I teach that like yeah. to, for real estate agents to also to become entrepreneurs, because we work in this model that allows us to do that, that creates passive flows of income. And this just goes, goes right along with it. So it gets me, gets me excited on that So <laughs> little tangent there, but yeah, yeah. Start with one and then build upon it. That's the thing too. Like you don't need to build you know, seven, eight income streams at once. Like that's going to be overwhelming. Start with one, master it, then move on to the second. Yep. Yep. So like buyer's guides, listing guides. I mean, real estate agents, think about all of these things. You can also, I have, speaking of Calendly, I have my Calendly link down below in the description box that you can click, sign up for some time to chat with me. We can help work through some of these topics, get you as Austin called it and I call it as well, lead magnets things that people want that are tangible that they can take with them. And I can help you with that as well. Um, Austin, we're coming to the top of the hour, my friend. This has oh been really, really, really good. I always learn a ton in chatting with you. Um, Likewise, I've brother. taken some notes today on a few things. I know our audience has a ton of takeaways. For those of you who are still watching live here at the end, let us know what other questions you have before we get going here in a few minutes. And then um, Austin, what else do you want to close out with? What else do you want to share? Uh, yeah, I have a, a really, so you had, uh, you wanted to see my, my number one most viewed video. I'm a, yes, I'm a, let's check I, it out. And I also, so this is not related to business, but sometimes, you know, trending topics or, or understanding the zeitgeist will help you um, have viral videos that are, that are related, but there's a, there's an underlying thing here that I want to share uh, with it as well. So a strategy, if you will. Okay. You can see my uh, screen again. Hopefully yes. here. Yep. Okay. So uh, what I want you to notice here is I'm going to pull up this video. This has 2.3 million views. Repost your most popular videos, guys <laughs> and gals. You see, I did this one video six times and it did, you know, 157,000 here. It did 140,000 here. You know, these kind of flopped, but it still did a couple, you know, thousand videos. Um, if you have a video that you already did, it doesn't matter if you do that same topic again. You can literally even just repost that same video. Look, this is a repost. These thumbnails, these are three separate videos. It's the same video that I reposted again and got another 150,000 views. So that's the underlying strategy. But let's. Uh... There's a huge hack right there, you guys. You can repost the same ones. You don't even have to do them over and over. Obviously, you want to start creating a library of these. Um, start recording again, you guys. What are you doing on a daily basis? And what will happen is you'll start to train your brain. I, it's funny. I have a quick story about this. I My family knows how much video I'm doing. I'm living, breathing, eating, video, 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 consuming content, sharing content. And this morning I was in our virtual world, which is our office, our EXP virtual world office. We don't have any brick and mortar. And I was in our accounting department. I had a question about my W-9. I got a letter in the mail saying I needed to update it. And I'm like, hmm, this seems a little fishy. And um, so I was in there. It took me seven minutes from the time I logged in to have my W-9 all figured out what was going on and so forth. And I was done where normally this could take days to figure out. 
I walked into the kitchen. I told my wife, I said, gosh, you know, that was just an incredible experience. And, and one of the things that I absolutely love about eXp Realty, and she goes, you should make a video about it. So they, what happens is you start to really internalize these things and more and more ideas start to come up when you have a structure and you know what you're looking to do. So, all right, Austin, thank you so much. Hey guys, get in touch with Austin. He, all of his beacons are down below. Beacons mean all of the links, all of the free resources, anything to help you with TikTok. I guarantee you he's going to be able to help you at a high level. Sign up in his calendar, get his free resources, take advantage of all the stuff, you guys, because um, he's the master at it. So, Austin, thank you so much for being here. Any last words? No, I, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, anybody that watches this, whether it was live today or uh, watching the replay, just take action. Get started on it. Jump in. Create consistent videos. Give it a month. See what happens. There we go, guys. Take action on it. Give it a month. Be consistent, follow a structure, and until next time, see ya!